Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Magpie Circle. One game under the belt for our new head coach, Stuart Maynard, unbeaten so far. Your thoughts on a one-all draw with Barrow. Coming up, the eagerly anticipated hop up the A60 to Mansfield Town on Saturday. Got to say, from the Jurassic era, the local derby for me is Forest, Derby or Leicester. But such are the vagaries of the pyramid of professional football. Fully appreciate that many of us view this as uh, one of the single biggest games that we currently now have to play. Joining us on the show tonight, Mark Stellard. Both of us are a bit under the weather. Stell's a bit croaky. Uh, I feel like I've been hit by a bus. Um, but we'll do our best to get through it all. Uh, plenty of people on the message boards already. Adam Kent, Adam Kent gets the spotter's badge, first person on tonight. Uh, he's been reading my book, so he'll be asleep by now. Um, he's also got a few thoughts and comments. Um, do, 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 what did he have to say? I think Saturday's match was, he uses the word acceptable. Uh, we need points from this run of tough matches. Matches. Maynard will, and this is a word that's being used quite a lot at the minute, tweak. And Mansfield squad looks depleted after the weekend. Evening from Dave Woolley from Essie Kent, who says, uh, hello all. Um, Ian G, uh, evening all. Am I the only one? Um, who was disappointed not to see Warner for at least some of the Barrow game. Evening to Kenneth Pointer, Paul Huskisson, uh, Jibala, who's so happy to see the man get another on the weekend. Um, Linda Lou says, hi, Stephen Newton. Evening all the big picture people. Hello from a very wet and miserable Blackburn where I'm staying on business. I was going to cheer on Blackburn Rovers against Wrexham in the cup, but decided to stay in and watch the Magpie Circle. Uh, good decision. Hopefully marginally more entertaining. Uh, Richard Hawksworth, one of our regulars. Um, a draw v Barrow, not the end of the world. A mobile athletic centre midfielder required before the window shuts, question mark. Uh, I think we looked very open uh, in centre midfield on Saturday. Uh, Graham Oates, uh, evening from, he's in Grantham. Gary Lee uh, is Woodthorpe Massive. Uh, evening all from Lippy Jane. Uh, Chris Gosling, our previous home games against promotion chasers saw us lose 4-1 to Mansfield and 0-2 to Wrexham. Saturday was solid if not spectacular, but a good starting point for Maynard and co. Hope to see Warner in the Mansfield game, please, says David Dawes. Agreed, says Chris, says Dave Woolley. Uh, Royston said, did anyone notice how the ref had his back to every Barrow corner in the second half? We'll be talking referees. Quite a lot of things happening with referees this weekend. Uh, a little bit later in the programme. Paul Huskerson, Mansfield have a few players out Saturday. That's an understatement, Paul. Uh, I hope we can take advantage. Um, OK, we'll leave that there because there's loads of them. Um, Stell, um, right, first game. Uh, under the new head coach, we've all, I think everyone's been trying to analyse, over-analyse, look at tweaks, look at this, what changed. Um, didn't much change at all for you or not? Not noticeably, no. I, I, if I'm absolutely honest, I, you know, watching the game and, and, and as, it, as it unfolded, as everybody did, um, th if there were tweaks, which there, there probably were tactically, um, they weren't obvious, you know, they, they were minor. Again, I apologise for my voice. If it goes, if I start coughing partway through this, I've been, I've been uh, a little bit under the weather. But um, yeah, th th there were no obvious tweaks or no obvious real changes. And, and I said on the radio, I said it, it felt, particularly in the first half, that, that Knott's played like a team that maybe had been told, go and do what you've been doing. There's no need to change loads. Go and do what you've been doing. And they looked a little bit hesitant in the first half, particularly, to play and do the things that they've been doing. And they almost played with an air of, is this really what he wants us still to do? And that's why there was no real fluency, no fluidity, particularly in the first half. Um, you know, first 15, 20 minutes, Barrow, you know, could have had a couple of goals before they actually mm. scored. Um, we showed some vulnerability at the back. But after that, it was, you know, better. Uh, without being spectacular. You know, we didn't create enough uh, credit to Barrow. Credit to Barrow, they were very well organised. 
um, the modern phrase, they had a low block, which meant they kept kept people behind the ball. You know, they, they kept bodies behind the ball until they had possession and then they looked to spring in a counter-attack. But, um, yeah, we didn't really, aside from, you know, putting some good balls, some good-looking balls, and we didn't get anybody on the end of them, only really Macca's chance in the second half was about the only thing of note that I remember as creating second half. So, um, in terms of in terms of changes, and I think my phone's just slipping off its little perch here. Um, <laughs> in terms of changes, nothing of massive note, but things will come over time. He's only been in the building just over a week, so you know it would be fool, foolish to sort of try and change everything all in one go. It will be if tweaks are going to be the the word of the day, if you like. It's going to be little little tweaks, you know. Maybe a little bit of something every week. You don't want to change everything all in one go because that can lead to un- real uncertainty, you know, a real discombobulation of the team, unity, if you like. Good word, Vic, good word. Um, I don't know if it's the right word, but it's good. Um, but, but it, yeah, it can, it can upset the balance. That, you know, the more changes you make, the more it can upset the balance of what is, you know, like we've said before, what is still a good team, a, you know, really a good team that doesn't need everything changing. It does just need improvements in certain facets of the game. If you're Stuart Maynard, you've had your 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 nine days in. Uh, weather put paid to Stockport, so what? One ninety minutes under your belt. Um, I think he used the phrase "respect the point." Um, do you think he would have been satisfied overall with Saturday? Um, not. Well, totally. I, I think he, when he, makes, when he says respect the point, I think that if I could put words in his mouth, which I don't want to do, or, you know, and I, you know, like I say, I've not met him yet, so so I don't know. But I think the full sentence would re- respect the point, considering how we played, you know, and the opposition we're playing against as well. That was a, for me, that was a six and a half out of 10 performance for Knots, certainly by Knots standards this season yeah. at home as well. But again, take into account, Barrow were above us in the table, still are above us in the table. Yeah. They're a good team. They're a solid team, well organised. And they've caused people problems, particularly on the, away from home. They're set up really well away from home. You can see why they picked up the points they have away from, away from home, because they're difficult to break down and they look to spring and they do have a threat when they go forward. So um, you, you've got to respect the point. It's not a bad point. It's not what he wanted. Would he have, you know... Would he um, say that's what he was going? Of course not. No, no. We want to win the game, and he want he'll want us to play better. Um, but you know, you've got to respect the point. There's no, there's no, there are no givens. There are no freebies in in professional sport. Uh, a few more comments from the message boards before picking up on a few of those points. Six and a half out of ten says Stelt for Saturday. What are your thoughts on the grading of that performance? Uh, Evening all says Shane Walker. Bob H says once again struggled against a physical team. Good evening, John Parnham uh, from Rainy Nuneaton. Uh, evening too from Alex Jackson. Good point in the end on Saturday. Second half never um, never got going. I thought we kind of more and didn't get going on the, in the first half, to be honest with you. Um, Alex, uh, Callum, can't lie, feel like we would have lost on Saturday under Luke Williams. Uh, Ian G, where's Macca's dad tonight? Yeah, the small <laughs> the small farmer life. Yeah, it was funny that. I mean, I, I did have some chats with Stell afterwards because for those of you who weren't watching last week, there was a new... A uh, message board posted the small farmers life, uh, the small farmer life, and uh, saying that claiming to be uh, Macca's dad, um, and uh, I have actually um, had a bit of a chat with him, uh, and he's got I don't know ten thousand followers on a on a small farming you YouTube subscriber channel. Yeah, Craig Langstaff. So he was genuine. Stell was a bit cynical. Stell was a bit cynical <laughs> there, and we had a few. I am messages. cynical. <laughs> But it is genuinely Macca's dad. So uh, I think he did say to me, he's retiring to the farm. He does watch all the time, as does Kedwin Scott's dad. Uh, I think perhaps, not 100% sure, the new manager's wife, Rachel, uh, also watches. Uh, I know the brothers do. So so just be careful what you say about people because you don't know who's watching. Just because they don't post a message on a message board doesn't mean they're not listening in. Um, A.D. Clark, one of our regulars. Evening all, Paul. Um, got your big coat on to warm you up on Saturday. I did. All the possession 
but one shot on target was a bit disappointing. I want to know um, anyone that's seen AD. Uh, he's a bit of a wannabe TV celebrity. He goes on some of these daytime um, um, what do you call them? Like uh, um, daytime TV shows, you know, answering questions and things. AD does. So uh, he was on recently. I missed it. Apparently, he didn't get very far in the show. So I don't know if anyone actually saw that. Uh, Dale Pike, at last time I saw a Knotts win at Field Mill. Uh, it's the one called Stadium, I think we're supposed to call it now, isn't it? Um, it was in 2005. You might be. I don't know. You was playing for then, still three two when Good John Thor Darson was in charge. Were you there when Good John was no, there? No, no, no. Probably just as I, well. Well, hey, I, I, he wanted it, you running a bit more, wasn't he? He didn't I, want you I, running them channels. When I left, not to but went to Barnsley. He was the manager at Barnsley at the time. He was different. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> a tough taskmaster, I think, might be, might be a phrase. Uh, Matt Cullingworth, do we think we'll see any outgoings or incomings before the window shuts? Yeah, we'll be discussing that a little bit later in the programme. Thought Robertson had a decent game. Uh, surprised he was the midfielder subbed. Guessing he's still coming up to the full pace, uh, lasting the full 90 minutes. Um, watch out for the Mansfield stewards, said Paul Taylor. We'll be discussing on a, on a genuine note. Crowd behaviour, we saw Port Vale with the referee being chased, West Brom, uh, Wolves. Uh, yeah, I do think we need to be a bit careful the way the game is going a little bit at the minute. Um, Chris Gosling um, thought he gave a physical in, physical presence in midfield, seen him get a bit of stick online, so what? Stuart, through evening both, just felt it was very important not for not, not to lose against Barrow. The draw was OK and represents a good foundation to begin from. Um, Chris Gosling, the conduct of the Barrow bench was pretty disgraceful Saturday. Uh, Adrian Dexter need quick ball and some one-touch football. Um, Chris B says, respect the point, had me having flashbacks to Neil Ardley. Not in a good way, says Chris B. Uh, Andy Eason thought Didsey and John Bostock were somewhat off the pace of things on Saturday. Would like to see the latter further forward. Just feel he's not suited to his current deeper role. Uh, Chris Gosling thought Baldwin was outstanding Saturday. Credit where it's due uh, when the defences had flack recently. Uh, hope to see Warner alongside him. Uh, him soon um to, to, to the big picture people uh, has clough been charged for his comments about the officials after the game on saturday he was very angry um to, 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 to samuel cj going in the coach to mansfield on saturday let's hope the coach doesn't get brick oh dear me i hope it will be i hope both sides of supporters show um some respectful restraint on saturday uh, a little bit surprised it's still a three o'clock kickoff to be honest with you but anyway um jamie reeve uh, evening all seem to lack creative options from the bench um, uh, no one who can really impact the game. More transfer business needed. Ah, Dimitri, the Montenegrin branch are out in force. Evening from Podgorica. Um, Stell had a... F <laughs> hey, you, you get top marks, Stell. You had a fantastic analysis during the match here in Montenegro. We listened oh. carefully. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you, Dimitri. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if that makes. I don't know if it means my my analysis makes more sense in Montenegro than it does in England. But uh, either way, I will, I will take any compliment. Thank you. Oh dear. Um, on that note, um, right. Um, seventh in the table still. Um, four points uh, actually only separates from from dropping into the bottom half of the table. Um, how much? Look, there's pressure all the time. But how important? from Stuart Maynard's perspective, do you think, is that he maintains Knott's position in the playoffs between now and the end of the season? Oh, look, it's it's absolutely the aim to not, not drop down the table. We want to be looking up, not down. Um, again, you've got to go through this period, period of adjustment, new manager, new head coach, should I say, uh, coming in and we'll want to you know implement his ways, we'll want to get his ways across. But as we've said before, you can't do, you can't just dump a load of changes on a team and a team group of players that are doing all right, that are playing well, 
but not you know not defending as a team well previously. You know, so you do want to make changes, tweaks, if we're going to call it that, but you can't do it overnight. You know, you can't do that. You've got the personnel you've got. You know, he's he's got the players that are there. Now, I'd say we're going to come on to whether we think there's going to be any additions before the window closes. But again, he, he's got to make them changes. And it's, of course, we don't want to drip that, drop down the table. And the focus is always getting in that top seven. So um, the focus doesn't change. And how important is it that we, we don't drop out of them? Well, it's important come the end of April. It's important after the 46th game. Um, but obviously, we want to main, stay as high as we can for as long as we can. And we want to look above us. We want to look forward. We want to be positive. So, But there's no getting away from There's a tough run of games coming up. So, you know, it would be... Again, it, it's, it's always about looking, boringly as it is, but looking at the one game ahead of you. Notts could win every game between now and the end of the season. And people are like, it's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. It probably isn't going to happen. But the fact of the matter is they could win every individual game. Can they win this Saturday against Mansfield, who will have a few um, players suspended, obviously a few missing through injury. Um, but can they win? Absolutely they can win. And that's the only game they've got to focus on. That's the only game they've got to concern themselves with, just just like they have done all this season. And, and it's the same as ever. You never look too far ahead. You always look at the next game. So, look, we can say it might, it might be a decent time for Notts to be playing to be playing Mansfield. But that doesn't take away from the fact it's going to be a fantastic atmosphere, hopefully a, a good, fant- you know, in a, in a good way. It's about bricking coaches and nonsense like that. But it'll be a good atmosphere, good rivalry, you know, and a game that the players will be absolutely bang up for. And, you know, the manager will want to come in. It's his first derby uh, and he'll be looking forward to it as well. And he'll get a, a taste of, of what it's all about in terms of how much it means, you know, bragging rights locally and things like that. So it's a, it's a massive game that you don't want to look any further than. And where we'll be on in the table after Saturday, great. We, we, hope we're, we hope we're still in that top seven. We hope we're, you know as high as we possibly can, but that doesn't define the season. You know, there are still plenty of games left. It's where we are at the end of the season. So, again, I've just got to play with my phone for stop it falling out. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's always about the end of the season. Of course, we use it as a yardstick, the form table, you know, what we've we been doing recently, where are we now compared to where we were three months ago, all that sort of thing. And you can, you can read all sorts of doom and gloom into it. Just like you say, we could be mid-table in three games' time if the results go against us. Um, but, you know, again, the league doesn't finish in three games' time. The, the league is, what, what we got 18 more games, I think, not So, you know, plenty of points to be played for. Mid-70s, I would think, gets you in the playoffs. You know, it, past history says mid-70s. So, can we reach that target? Absolutely, we can. But there's just three points to play for in every game. So, Saturday is a massive game, but maybe maybe just a good time to be to be playing Mansfield when they've not been on such a good run lately as well. As a new head coach, Del, let him be only his second team. It's the sort of game where you know a manager or a coach can very quickly endear himself to the faithful, isn't it? You know, because Notch do not have a good record at Mansfield. It is viewed really um as our main derby fixture that we now have. Um Let's be honest, we took a bit of a spanking um, at Madeleine early this season. If you get a result Saturday, that really um, gets a... I'm not saying there hasn't been total buying, but it gets, it gets uh, you know, everyone is really buzzing if you get a result Saturday with the new head coach at the helm. Well, absolutely. A win Saturday would be massive uh, for, for no other reason, really than, as you say, the poor record that we've had at Mansfield. It's been a while since Notts fans have seen Mansfield win, at Notts win at Mansfield. Um, and it would really help Stuart Maynard really get his feet under the table, feel positive about everything, feel part of it, go, right, this is it. Now it's begun. I feel part of it. I feel welcome. The fans have took to me. And 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 that will that will be it then. Then they can be off and running. You know, it, small things like that can really make a massive difference. Um, you know, that's not to say if the wind doesn't come Saturday that, that, that it's the opposite. We've got to, well, no. you know, nothing like that at, at all. But it would just help. It would be a really, really good positive result for for the circumstances, for the situation. 
And, you know, you always want to win your local derby. Bragging rights are, are, are massive. And especially when that's in the you know, very, very early days of a new head coach's tenure, you know, it'd be brilliant for him. And and I think he can just breathe a bit easier, you know, when we achieve that, sadly. Uh, John Parnham says, I've heard criticism about Knotts' performance on Saturday, but I think that for most of the time we played some pretty good football. Our passing game was excellent for most of the game. Uh, AD Clark says, thanks for the mention, read the telly, Paul. Uh, I'm trying to get on who wants to be a millionaire next. Can I use uh, Stell as phone a friend? <laughs> I can't believe that. Obviously, I'm not your friend, am I, Aidy? But yeah, you know, you want Snell over me as your phone I, a friend. I can't hey, believe you, I can't believe you'd do that if you wanted a million. But go on, <laughs> you could phone me on the was it the hundred pound question. <laughs> Good luck to AD. Uh, so we'll keep an eye out for our, our millionaire. Um, Stephen Newton bet Jody Jones will be a bit sore after the treatment Barrow dished out to him on Saturday. Uh, Ian G says, Ginny Marais gets stick, but I think he has a role to play if we are to figure in promotion. Uh, he runs not non-stop and does create problems, which gives Macca a bit more space than he gets usually. Um, and the Eason, no centre-forward option on the bench on Saturday. Uh, em emphasises to me uh, that a forward and a midfielder are a must before the window closes. Uh, Trevor Robinson is in advocating um, a debut for Jaden Warden uh, on Jaden Warner on Saturday. Um, to Ian G said Jody was limping after the challenge and never got back fully back to speed. Um, Elkazar 35, uh, travelling down from Newcastle to Madeleine on Saturday, then getting the supporters bus to Mansfield. At least we'll have a vehicle to go home in. Yeah, um, so people know the trains are on strike. Uh, there is still an outside chance they could be reinstated, apparently. Uh, it's all to do with the strike. And in theory, they're supposed to run a 30 percent rather than a total strike. But at the minute, there are no trains between Nottingham and Mansfield. So lots of buses and however else, anybody else wants to get up there. Um, right. Um, I'll tell you what, Stella, let's talk goalkeeper for a minute. Let's talk goalkeeper. So we signed another young loan keeper. Um, Adrian Stone got a bit of flack. Um, for me, the last couple of games, ironic as it seems with Grimsby, um, I thought he looked OK Saturday. Would you agree, or what are your views? Is the head coach kind of giving everybody that was previously in the starting eleven an opportunity to kind of cement their place before apparently bringing in any of the other guys? I'm not sure I possibly, yeah, possibly. I think that's that's the way he's he's going to go. Again, it goes back to not needing to change a whole heap of things. So he, he stayed with, you know, a tried and tested formation, just the one change with uh, Richard Brindley coming in for Connell on Saturday. Um, so, you know, I thought Aidan Stone's done well in the last couple of games. The, the only slight question mark I would have against him on Saturday was he was getting pinned in from crosses and uh, from corners, mm. uh, set pieces that Barrow were taking. And, you know, I know it's difficult when bodies are there, but you've got to make sure you've got your defenders there keeping the, Keeping the man who's there to keep you on the line, keep him away, make the referee aware that you're being pinned in, but you've also got to be physical enough to get out and get the ball if it's in that six-yard box. Um, but other than that, he made a fantastically important save in yeah. the first 10 minutes, the one-on-one, -on -one, sure. got a left leg out to it, kept it at nil-nil, um, and he made good saves in that Grimsby game as well. So so th there's absolutely no reason, I, I think, at the minute, for based on form, for, for the change to be made. I think, you, you know, He's had a chance to have a look at him. You know, Aidan Stone was playing uh, when Ashby Hammond came in under Luke Williams and now uh, Stuart Maynard's in charge. He's kept his place and I don't imagine he's going to lose his place based on, on Saturday's performance. So um, it might be a case of Ashby Hammond has to, has to just wait his time, be patient and wait for an opportunity that, again, I always say the starting 11, you've got your chance to keep the shirt. You perform, generally you keep the shirt. So... I don't imagine that, that, that Stuart Maynard's any different, but if you perform, you keep the shirt, but it's good to have competition in places. And again, that's some, somebody mentioned there about not having any attacking options on the bench on Saturday, and that, that was noticeable. I think, we, I think we had three goals, three league goals on the bench in total, and that was one apiece for three separate players. So, 
You know, no attacking option at all on the bench for Notts. Or no obvious attacking option anyway. So, you know, that's something that maybe highlights a bit of thinness in the squad. Obviously, we've got Kedwin Scott out injured long term. He's not likely to be back much before the end of the season, if at all. Uh, and Junior Marais just doesn't seem to be able to get himself fit for any length of time. So, um, you know, that that's awkward and difficult. And young James Sanderson didn't make the bench. So, um, yeah, maybe that's an area that will be addressed before the window closes. Yeah, I, I tell you one thing I did, not it's not even a tweak, I think it's a fundamental change. As it, many people have been asking about players and injuries, you know, and um, managers sometimes can be quite reticent to volunteer too much information. And I think Luke kind of fitted into that category. You didn't find out much. Uh, and, you know, we've spoken about it a few times on the show, haven't we? And and lo and behold, last week, uh, we get a, a very comprehensive piece um, from uh, Notts' uh, fitness, strength, conditioning coach talking about um, the latest with all the players. You know, so I, I didn't notice a, a difference in tack there uh, under the new head coach that um, in terms of updates on all the players, when we might expect them back, what they've suffered. Um, <coughs> players, Stel. Bless you, my friend. Um, on, on the, on the, uh, is there, I would say it's a disconnect, but does it surprise you that a, a, a certainly a balance of percentage of players that we sign on loan get very limited options and game time. So we, Tupton came in, didn't really get a sniff. Makari came in, we have now signed him, but we had to wait quite a long time, didn't he, before he got any any real game time? Yeah, um, look, the nature of Knott's recruitment, isn't it, is that the, the head coach isn't, you know, the one who has the final say, if you like, in terms of, you know, he doesn't have the overall, um, you know, control of who comes in, who comes out. So, so there are going to be occasions and there have been, you know, over the recent years, the, the recruitment is in general, I think everybody would say it's been fantastically good. You know, yeah. we've, we've unearthed quality um, and, you know, paid a small premium in comparison to the value that they're worth. So it's working. Um, but in and amongst that, you're always going to get it, no matter how you do your recruitment. You're going to get players that ultimately come in and, and the head coach doesn't deem you, I say good enough, but doesn't deem you worthy of a regular starting role. Um, and that can be for a number of reasons. It can be maybe what you're showing up in, in training. Maybe he doesn't see the attributes that you've got fitting into the team. And it may be the fact that with such a strong starting eleven, and don't forget the amount of wins not so bad, over the last 18 months or so, it is very difficult to break into a winning team. Now, people go, yeah, but over the last 10, 12 games, we haven't been a particularly consistently winning team. And that's right. So there's never been a better chance for people to break into the team at knots in the last 18 months. The fact of the matter is, we sort of, we have recycled, we have sort of gone round the edge. And again, I'm talking before Stuart Maynard was here. Luke Williams sort of tried to, to, to move Mexico mess things around a bit, move things around, change things about, try different people. The outcome was pretty much similar. It never really changed anything, which hints at the fact that, you know, those players that aren't in the team are not any better than what is in the team. It's it's trying to find the players that are in form and fit together. Again, I always use my analogy of jigsaw pieces, trying to find who, who interlocks better with who and who creates a better team together overall. Um, and and there's not been a lot wrong. So there's not been, you know, not been need of total upheaval. But, you know, to, specifically with the lone players that come in, it's down to them to earn the shirt. They, they've got to show something tremendous. And they may only have had a chance in the, the EFL trophy early on in the season mm -hmm. or whenever. But whenever they've had that chance, they haven't really taken it. So, you know, it's it's again, it's always down to a player. The players will look for any excuse why they're not in the team. You know, but in general, and I can say this now, my career is long since finished. It is generally down to what you produce on the pitch. You know, no manager ever doesn't pick what he thinks will be a winning team or the best team. You know, no nobody does that. But as a player, you convince yourself there's there's all sorts of schoolduggery going on that, that you're deserving of a place. But if you were deserving of a place, you would generally get a place 99 times out of 100. 
Adrian Dexter says we're not that far off the automatic promotion spots. Some improvements in defence and a new midfield defensive addition uh, and a backup striker needed, though. John Parnham adds, with the injured players starting to recover, I expect the second part of the season to look up in terms of squad strength. Ian G says we need to look after Didsy. 90 minutes is a big ask regularly and he is blowing for me after 60 or 70. Joseph Crabtree says will Randall look like a good attacking option on paper uh, but not quite worked out for him this season. Um, duh, duh, duh. What else have we got here? Um, I think Lippy Jane has got Marge at the wrong end of the stick with um, uh, our head coach being asked to work a notice period for BT. No, 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 no. He's full time at Knotts. Don't worry about that. I actually bumped into him briefly in the shop on Friday afternoon after training. Um, so uh, he and his assistant, um, very engaging characters um, and certainly uh, was looking forward to that game on Saturday when I had a quick word with him. Uh, right, Richard Tomlinson said Stone wasn't passed to as much on Saturday by his defenders compared to previous matches. I thought he did well uh, on Saturday when needed. Um, be interesting to see if and when the new goalkeeper is used. I think that's going to be quite interesting. But I think Estelle said I I would foresee uh, Stone being in the posts um, for a little while longer just yet. Um, on that promotion picture, Estelle, um, personally, I think it would be hard to look beyond Stockport and Wrexham, given the resources and their resilience to fill two of uh, the three automatic spots. But, you know, we, we talk a lot about the challenges that we face, change the manager, uh, injuries, but most of the other teams in the reckoning have all got their own challenges as well as us, haven't they? You know, Mansfield clearly have, have had a bad season for injuries. You know, Wimbledon on on the edges, um, they've sold their main striker to Ipswich today. Um, everyone's got challenges, haven't they? You knots don't have a monopoly on key players being injured or whatever. Um, that would give me a degree of um, confidence that we can cope with a change in head coach. I mean, I think it's already over half the clubs in League Two have got different coaches to the one they started with uh, in August. Yeah, like I say, challenges are not unique to Notts. It's, it's throughout football. There are always challenges. It's, say it's professional sport, elite sport, and it throws up challenges because everybody's fighting, scrapping, doing everything they can to get success, the same success. Everybody's chasing the same prize and not everybody can get there. So, so there's going to be challenges along the way. We're not going to be the only club that face injuries. That happens across the place. Suspensions, look at Mansfield uh, for Saturday. Yeah. Um, so, so there are always challenges. You never, absolutely, you never tame this game. Never. So, you know, you've got to be prepared. It's about being putting them fundamentals in place to make sure that the club itself can meet the challenges when they're around. Now, again, we, you've got to try and thrive and prosper in that scenario. And not so in a decent position. Yes, not as good as it looked what two and a half months ago. But you know, challenges have come in the way. Now we're in a transfer window. When that shuts then the challenges are there because no team, not just not, no other team can change players. So you've got what you've got for the running, for the final, what's it going to be, 17 games for us and whatever everyone else has got left. So again, that's where injuries in that final stretch, key injuries, can play a massive part. And don't forget as well, you know, we've got a tough run of fixtures coming up. Of course, we have, everybody knows that. But so have other teams. We've all, you know, pretty much only just passed halfway. Everybody's got everybody yet to play. There'll be points dropped. There'll be teams going in and out of form. When you look at the form table at the minute, the top three are not really at the top of that, you know, which is unusual. Usually, obviously, the teams at the top are dominating the form table. It's not really like that at the minute. So teams are just starting to falter as injuries catch up with players, as you know, the demands of the season catch up with players. You know, generally, it is the bigger squads that cope better, the stronger squads. So... Look, there's plenty of twists and turns to come. This is not the National League. You know, this is not the National League that is one or two horses in it, really. There are plenty in this. Anybody in the top half of the table will have genuine aspirations of making the playoffs or above. Um, and then, you know, there could be any sort of twists and turns for any number of them between now and the end of the season. So all knots can do, focus on them, 
Like I say, I'd like to see maybe one, maybe two come in before the end of the window, but we'll we'll have to watch this space to see what happens. Yeah, you just preempted my question now. I was going to say, you know, do you expect anything to come in and would you be wanting something to come in? So, so whereabouts? Because not historically operate with a small squad, don't they? Compared to, to to other other teams, where would you be looking to strengthen them? Well, even if it was just temporarily alone, I'd be looking for a striker. You know, I I, I really would be looking for a striker because, as I say, you saw the bench set in, and I'm, the rest of the squad talk about there, there are players coming back to fitness, so you don't want to bloat the squad by getting players in the the. You know, when players are fit, well, they're not even going to be the 18. I'm not sure there's um, anyone imminent. You know, I don't think there's anyone here a, a week on Saturday, you know. No, no, probably not. But we talk about Saturday. James Sanderson didn't get on the bench. Now, I know yeah. um, Stuart, Stuart Maynard won't really know him. He's a young lad and whatever, and he's probably gone with experience. But just you look at a bench, a seven-man bench, and there is no striker on there. You know, when yeah. Barrow had strikers on there, they changed the two strikers. And the two strikers they brought on have got goals. So... Not, not on Saturday, thankfully, but previously. You know, they got that option on the bench or options on the bench. Knots didn't. Now, I know the sort of other side of that is not generally play with three attacking options with Dan Crowley, McCauley and um, David McGoldrick, along with the other attacking options. But, you know, forward players, forward thinking players. But that's almost universally the whole of the strikers on the pitch from the start. You've got nothing to change it up, nothing to, to freshen it up if need be. And God forbid you get an injury to, to one of them players. So, um, look, you can shuffle the pack, of course. You've got Sam Austin, midfield player, very versatile. Jim O'Brien can come in there. But there's no attacking option. And I think when you're coming down the stretch, and, and again, not easy to just go out there and find somebody who's capable of scoring goals. But I think it will be something that they, they I'm sure they'll be looking to address. Sure they will be. I, I know we talk about problems defensively and all that. But I think when you come down the stretch... God forbid Macca gets a knock or he's going to miss some games because then you, you look as if the cupboard's a little bit thin. I don't know how long Junior Morais is going to be out for. I don't know what the situation is there. Um, but for me, even if it's just a short-term loan for, for three months, bring, bring somebody in who can maybe make a difference, could win you a couple of games. And if somebody can come on and score goals and win you a couple of games, make the difference between drawing and winning a couple of games between now and the end of the season... That could be the difference between missing the playoffs, being in the playoffs, or automatic, or being in the playoffs. You know what I mean? That every point is vital at any stage of the season, but coming down the stretch, I think even more so. Uh, I'd say centre half for me. Still, still think I know. We've got well, one I, yeah, uh, yeah, still, as well. Until such point as we concede fewer goals. I don't think we're going to be winning five or six out of seven or eight games, if I'm honest. Um, I do think we have. I think with the, you know, while the attacking options stay fit, I think we get away with it. But clearly, Macca or someone like that, then 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 we would be in the cart at the minute. But yeah, for me, I'd still like to see another centre half. Be interesting to see whether we do bring. It's only three days now, isn't it? Only three days. Uh, be interesting to see whether we do bring anybody in. Uh, Robert Minister says would like to see a defensive midfielder, and yes, definitely another striker. Big picture people says top three in the last six games form <coughs> uh, are Harrogate, Crew. And Tranmere. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised MK Dons aren't in that because I know they're on a pretty decent run at the minute. They're certainly climbing up the table. Uh, Chris B actually echoes that point. MK Dons have been on a great run since Williamson took over. Uh, can see them being the third team in the automatics. Um, right. It, it, it is a subject that's always contentious. Refereeing. Refereeing. And um, before we went on the show, I asked Stell for his thoughts because um, the referee, uh, American guy, um, one of his first games in the English leagues on Saturday. Uh, now, now, I'll say exactly what I said on Saturday before watching a single or seeing a single word on social media. I thought he wasn't a bad ref. Yeah. Uh, social media clearly has decreed that, you know, he's one of the worst referees ever to walk the planet. Um, Stella will give his view in a minute. We see at Port Vale a fan running and chasing 
a referee off the pitch. You saw the shenanigans at West Brom and Wolves in the, or Wolves and West Brom in the FA Cup on Saturday. You know, I think it becomes far, far too easy to complain about referees, vent your anger at this, that and the other. Um, I think there was a debating point about the incident with Jody Jones, uh, when you could make an argument for a red. Um, the reality of the modern game in my eyes is that if you keep both feet on the ground or keep at least one foot on the ground, you can largely get away with blue murder. The moment you lift two feet and make a tackle, it's automatically a red, regardless of whether you catch him, miss him, you know, do no damage at all. That seem, that is a mandatory red. But, you know, that professional tackle foul premeditated there is a there is a grey area. I mean, what was your take on the ref, Satley So? Because I mean he has had pelters, to be fair. He's had pelters. Well, yeah, yeah, you mentioned that to me just before we came on air, and I surprised me a little bit, but um I, I thought he was okay. I thought he was okay. I you know, nothing <laughs> cracking me. We we've had worse. We've had worse in the last eighteen months yeah. or four and a half years, whatever it is. Um no, like I said, the only the only for me, the only Look, all refs get make mistakes, just like all players do. You know, there'll be decisions you disagree with. I think the only contentious one, the only one that could have affected the game, was the foul on Jody, which I said on commentary was it, it really, really went up to the borderline between a yellow and a red. It was, it was obviously, definitely at least a yellow for for a tackle from behind, professional foul, whatever you want to call it. But I think he went in it, rather than just tripping somebody up and stopping a foul, take the yellow for the team, as we say, he absolutely hacked him down. You know, he absolutely, and, and whether the ref could have then sort of thought, well, that's excessive force endangering an opponent and could have turned it into a red. You know, I, I thought that was right up to the line. I've not seen it again. We only, you know, we get it, we see it live uh, and that's it. So, but look, it wasn't one of them that was, it's not like saying a stonewall penalty has been turned down or, any, you know, anything like that. It was a it was a yellow that on another day could have been a red, but it wasn't definitely a red that he missed. So, look for me, I look you're going to get them decisions. That's what makes football so good: debating decisions, isn't it? Talking about it, we've got computers and cameras doing it, and people, and we're still debating decisions there whether it's right. So we VAR. are. So I thought the ref was where ref was fine. I think it's a it might be a case of a new manager or new head coach coming in at not, so we can't can't have a go at him. We, not really have a go at the players because they did okay. It was a decent enough performance. So somebody's got to, people want to vent at something. Why not? Why not let it be the ref? So um, yeah, I, th I thought he was. I thought he was fine. I thought he was fine. Yeah, I do think though, still there there are, there are one or two undertones and undercurrents at the minute. You know, I mean, the, the, the incident at Port Vale from, I don't know whether you've seen much of it on little snippets of video. I mean, it is pretty disgraceful, really. There's a fan that literally comes onto the pitch, runs at the ref and the run sort of, and the ref sort of does a mazy run uh, down the tunnel with the fan in pursuit. Interestingly, not one player tried to stop the uh, the fan. By the way, and and the and the fan was kind of like grabbed by the the by the coaches in the dugout. Um, but but, you but, know, on that, but on that, Paul, if if a player had have intervened to stop a fan, the player would have got in trouble. Depending on the force that he used, and obviously obviously stuff like yeah, that, the player yeah. could get in trouble, which yeah. is ridiculous. I'm sorry, yeah. anybody anybody enters yeah. the field of play, all bets are off. But then hey, that's a, that's a totally different world that you know different discussion and, and different world um you know from my point of view it, i've not seen that at port vale um but if it is you know then it's disgraceful it's disgraceful and like i say i say the book should be thrown at whoever the individual was it shouldn't like anything if the punishment isn't severe enough you will not deter it from happening again and again and again and unfortunately you know you're right the undercurrent of crowd trouble you know, people just these ridiculous reactions, um, unacceptable reactions from numpties. You know, just just too much. And like I say, you, you can argue everything, social merits and all that sort of thing about the, the world we're living in now and, and things like that. It boils up to that. Football, unfortunately, becomes the the conduit for people to mm. to act out their idiocy because mm. you're allowed to get away with it so much more on mass at a football ground. 
you know, and then if somebody, one individual wants to take it into their own hands, then, then like I say, by all means, throw the book at them. And I don't just mean ban from a ground. I mean, literally, you know, literally punish them severely. So that's the only way you'll stop anything happening. And that's whether that's player behaviour, whether it's fan behaviour or, or anything in life for me. But hey, that's, that's a totally different uh, soapbox I could get on. <laughs> um, Chris Gosling said, had the challenge on Jones been head on, it would have been red. It was uh, way up the leg and out of control. The parameters shouldn't change when the challenge is from behind. Uh, Martin Blenny says, thought Macca looked very disappointed, despondent on Saturday. If we miss out on promotion, don't think he will be here next season. Richard Tomlinson, Stel. I'm bringing in a striker. Who would you choose, uh, arguably between a League One striker who isn't currently playing or National League striker uh, who is banging them in? I mean, firstly, is this one where you want someone that's had regular first team action? Because a lot of our lone players are players that have had a handful of games at senior level. Would you be wanting an experienced proven <laughs> they're not easy to get admittedly yeah yeah you know the type of loan that you would want to see as a striker coming in yeah i mean look yeah, we could all play fantasy football can't we i'd like somebody who's scoring regularly and just fell out with a manager and just as always wanted to play for Notts county and score goals so um it, look, it doesn't matter the, the, the it is the individual that matters so that could be somebody ideally you'd want somebody who's playing and fit particularly this stage of the season because as we saw a little bit with Dan Gosling, the pedigree, the, you know, the quality that he's had, the career he's had. I know he, and he's had, had a massive injury and he's been out of the game for, for sort of a best part of a year, hasn't he? And unfortunately, it looked like it showed he wasn't up to speed. Um, that doesn't mean to say that everybody in that sort of situation is, is going to be the same. But you'd like somebody, you would like somebody who's played a decent amount of football. Again, if they're, if they're regular in the team they're at, they're not likely to be, be coming. They're not likely to be allowed to go in January anyway. So so it might be somebody who's been sort of in and out of the team, either somebody at a higher level or somebody who's had a go. A bit like Jaden Warner at Norwich. He's had a couple of, I think, three, three appearances, was it, for, yeah. for their first team this season, uh, but then playing regular under-21s and what have you. Um, but, yeah, they, they're going to be fit and going to be up, sort of up to speed, if you like. It, it's very difficult to, to play theoretical games. I'd like him to be... Six foot six, great in the air with a fantastic touch and can do the 100 metres in about 8.5 seconds as well and have an eye for goal. But I don't imagine he's going to be available in January, that lad. So, uh, look, uh, give me some examples and, and of names who was available because it, it is trying to find them in January. It is tough yeah. because there's got to be a reason these players are available. But given the choice, I, I'd probably go for somebody who's been playing given the choice but i say are they are is there anybody that's going to fit that mold i don't know in general if they have been playing regularly it's going to involve a transfer fee as opposed to maybe somebody coming in from a higher division an academy or something who's had a bit of an experience and he's desperate to prove themselves so whoever comes in if they score 15 goals between now and the end of the season we'll, we'll make do whether he's 21 or 41 the big picture people says, I think we need a couple of experienced pros. The young lads we're getting have lots of potential, but we need some savvy. Yeah, I guess it's part of a debate between short termism in the senses in how important is it that we get into the playoffs at the end of the season? You know, and for me, I think it's massive absolutely massive and there's all sorts of things further down the line about how it affects the overall plan that the club has um but for me you know i think you've got to bust a gut to to give yourselves the very 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 best possible chance of being in the playoffs to continue some momentum you know whenever you change manager very high risk strategy uh the problems you have uh with with what can happen but you know i i, I do think absolutely vital um that we that, that the head coach has all the very very best possible tools to get over the playoff line you know uh, yeah. and it will be sorry Stel. Yeah, i was just going to say that that's absolutely right like we always say about strength and when you're strong and all that sort of thing but absolutely we are seven points away from automatic promotion here 28 games played with seven points. Of course, we're on a run of form where people are more inclined to look behind and over the yeah. shoulder and below us. But we're seven points away from automatic. Now, And if again, we beat Mansfield? 
exactly. We're, we're even closer. But 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 realistically, that's where in the old days the managers would be absolutely battering the chairman to say, "Come on, chairman, give us another couple of players. Come on, if if you give us a if you give us a couple more players, it will make the difference between yeah. possibly playoffs or automatic promotion." You know, I know the game's changed. I know it's slightly different, but it, but the but the ethos of it is exactly the same. Yeah. You know, now is the time we've put ourselves in a position yes. that if we can find a sprint finish. Yeah, 18 games is more than a sprint finish. But if we can put in a good run of form between now and the end of the season, automatic is not out of reach. We're seven points away from it. And I know people say, well, it's, you know, happy clapping and, mm. and roast into glasses and all that. It is, maybe. But then go and get a couple, add a couple of strong players between now and the weekend. And then people might go, hold on a minute, not so serious, not so seriously going for this. And you just never know. There's no guarantees, of course. And again, it's got to fit within a budget and you've got to get the players, the actual individuals, not just theoretical players that we're coming up with that are going to make the difference. But, you know, we are not a million miles away from it. So, you know, I, 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 I'm sure in the conversation Stuart may not had with the, with the owners, which is a little bit more difficult when you've not got your feet under the table, but I'm sure he would be saying to them, look, you're not far away. How much are you willing to go? How much are you willing yeah. to be prepared to to go this January, or do we wait to wait for the summer? We will, we will yeah. find out. Yeah, I mean, it is when you think about it, Stel. Little short of miraculous, with one of the five worst defensive records in this division, that we're in the playoffs and have been all season, um, and. We are where we are. And like you say, you know, old school it may be, but you got to do everything you possibly can to be in the top seven. Worst case, at the end of the season, yeah, with right. where we are right now. You know, 11,000 on Saturday. 11,000. You're not telling yeah. me we ain't a good bet to get a striker to come in here, score a few goals. Yeah, we're 11,000 in the ground. Well, like I say, still at League Two level, people will fall over themselves to come to Knotts because we're a big club at this level. The facilities, everything about the club. Will will attract people, and the style of football we play, the goals that are scoring, that will attract people. That that's, I think, attracting people is not the difficulty. You know, it's it's trying to find the right ones, trying to find the right ones. Again, we don't we always want to bring in people. Go, well, let's what, let's open the purse strings and bring in six players or five, but but then you end up with a squad that's massive, and that'll put people's nose out of joint. That could go completely the other way. So it's very, very difficult. Dead easy for me to sit here and say, go and get two, it could make the difference. But I can bet your bottom dollar that is that is happening around the country. At all levels, managers, head coaches are going to their chairman or the boards who, who sanction signings and saying, can we just get one more? Can we just get one more quality one? And and again, I, and I don't want to say anything untoward about the, the owner. I think the owners and the model and everything, Richard Montague being fantastic, absolutely flawless faultless if you can can lay that on anybody but part of me when um they came out and they, they've, they've said um about you know funding or financing the club to the sort of championship is easily doable then okay is part of that making one or maybe two really bold strong signings in january when you're on the cusp of the playoffs with a chance of automatic Maybe, maybe not. They, they, like I say, they've got to do the maths. They've got to do the figures, run the numbers, see what's available, and see whether it is worth it or not. But like I say, we are in it. We're at a, at a, it's a real seesaw point of the season. This is really at this coming to the end of the January window. Being where not so seventh, you know. And again, you could easily talk about dropping out the playoffs, but just as easily talk about with seven points from automatic, yeah. with eighteen games to go. We are not out of it by a long shot. And we've got teams above us and around us to play. And they'll all be playing each other, as we've said. It's a real seesaw point of the season. And it's going to be fascinating. Whatever happens, whatever happens, you know, it's going to be fascinating, as this part of the season always is, to see who stays the course and distance and who drops away. I'm going to hit you with a name now, Stel. I know you don't. You, I know you're not. You don't quite understand the old uh, message boards, so you don't read them. So Martin Shipley takes credit for this one. Right. Uh, it's. A, it's. A, I tell you what. It's a really interesting name, Troy Deeney. <laughs> Troy Deeney, not not as head coach. No, 
No, no, no, no, no. Just, just, not just, for, not for the dressing room. the either. coaching aspirations, Troy. Just find the back of the net. Um, oh. Do you know what? In this team, yes, I'd tech him. Yeah? Yeah, I think, he, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I think in this team, with the delivery, with the service, he'd get. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know who I'm playing him in place of. I'd probably put him on the bench, if I'm honest. I was about but, to say, but it gives you an option, yeah. doesn't it? One all against Barrow. Yeah, or yeah. Power. On you come, yeah. so. anybody, anybody who knows where the goal is in this Knotts team could flourish because if the ball is in the penalty area a fair amount of the time. Saturday wasn't as much as normal, but you'll get chances. And somebody who can score goals, say what, he'd be a decent option off the bench, wouldn't he? He'd, he'd get a few eyes on us. I'm not sure I'd... Uh, I'm not sure what it'd be like for team camaraderie and things like that, but um, yeah, yeah, I'd take him as a player. Yeah, I'd take him. I'd take a risk. It's interesting him. because what you kind of, and it's an interesting debate, Stel, because the brothers are all about process. They're all about patience. They're all about gradual build, aren't they? Um, there's not a lot of instant in their vocabulary or their approach, but you and I would probably come from a school whereby you know what, what what can we make how can we make some instant coffee yeah in the next three months because if we can get a really nice instant coffee going gets you in the playoffs you know yeah i you mean know. look i think I, I think the way they address things is is really good it, it's sort of I say laid back but it's 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 not what you can do but and we've seen it before by people coming in promising the world and promising it yeah. instantly, if you like, is that sets yourself up for a bit of failure. Whereas I think they come at it a different way going, look, we want success. Of course we do. But there's no pressure to get it this season, but we will do everything we can to get it this season. Now, you know, are we at a, are we at a tipping point whereby these next few days are just yeah, which way do we go? Do we just hedge our bets that, yeah. OK, we've got enough in the building, we're getting a few back from injury, we've got enough, we'll we'll manage and we'll we'll still get in them playoffs and still have a chance for automatic? Or do they think, no, if we add, yeah, that gives us an even better chance. We want to make sure it's worth the financial sacrifice. And again, you know better than most, Paul, the financial sacrifice they're making anyway, oh. financing the team. You know, it makes no financial sense what they're doing, as most owners will find. Um, so it's easy for us to go, well, you're losing two and a half million a year. Why not Why not make an extra quarter of a million on some players? You know, yeah. easy for us because it's not us putting our hand in our pocket. But, you know, it, it really is. Football, again, football and back to these transfer windows provides these moments, these mm. do or die moments. It's not do or die, but it feels like it for fans, yes. for those that are involved. Yeah. You know, it feels like you know, because if they do, if they go out and bring in three players, three decent players, and we don't, and we still slip out the playoffs, nobody gives them any extra thanks for it because somebody right. will have to carry the can. It'll be Stuart Maynard's fault or it'll be somebody else's fault for, for doing that or they shouldn't have brought them in because it's upset the players that are there. If they bring three players in and we met automatic, all of a sudden, it's the greatest decision ever made and Stuart <laughs> Maynard's great and the owners are great. You know, that's just the, just the sort of juxtapositions that football yes. provide. You know, you can... It's easy after the event and it's easy when your neck's not on the chopping block. You know, so what we do is easy. But it, it give, they have got... I would say they will have... I would say real dilemma. They'll have been thinking about it for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and doing the work and finding players and prospects and all that sort of thing. But um, it really is, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're right in the bottom line, when you're covering the bottom line, yeah. when your money's there, your name's owning the club and, and you're running the club, you know, you stand or fall by your decisions. And then, like I say, predominantly they've got the majority, the vast majority, absolutely bang on. So whatever happens, we'll back them. 11,000 plus Knots fans will back the team. We'll back everybody. But like you, I think, you know, it would be it would be such such a shame, more than a shame, if we actually missed out on the playoffs this season. But it would also be a shame if we didn't really have a go at that automatic. Mm. 
And I guess part of these discussions, I mean, um, I think most of us would have seen, um, and, and clearly they are a division higher, uh, but Bristol Rovers paid, it was certainly a six-figure sum, uh, d depending who you read, anywhere between two and 300,000, uh, for Camille Conti from Grimsby, who's looked a decent player uh, at League Two level, and clearly Bristol Rovers have decided to um, splash the cash. <coughs> A bit. Um, there's a Swindon striker Khan who reported he's been attracting a bit of interest as well. Um, yeah, interesting debate. Um, like you say, we can all make sound very, very light of it. Um, in the next, I think it's a couple of weeks, we've got Kieran Maguire, the football finance guy, coming on. Uh, and, and he will be able to hopefully perhaps explain uh, to some of our flock the sums of money that are required to run a football club. You know, and I'll, I'll remind you all again, Notts with seven, eight thousand average, a Wembley playoff game, winning uh, promotion out of the National League at cost the brothers 2.75 million quid. And the brothers currently have put in to this football club 13 million pounds. Now, part of that was a purchase price. It wasn't picking up six, seven, eight million pounds worth of losses from Alan Hardy or anything like that, that some people try to sort of portray. 13 million pounds to get from National League to seventh in Division Two. You know, and it's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. <laughs> um, so it's not like they're not spending, but I guess then... The argument from among fans, Stal, is you've got to give it a proper go. And, and managers, isn't it? And, and it may well be that Stuart Maynard has, has come in and the brothers have said to him, look, we're going to sign two loan players under the age of 23 this window. That's it, because this is the way we're building it. We're not party to those discussions. But um, momentum's powerful in football, isn't it? And we've, and we've certainly had it. For quite a long period of time now. And you only realise how good momentum is when you haven't got it. <laughs> so uh, I just hope we can continue this, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You, like I said, but that's it. You want to ride that crest of a wave. And, and again, you've got to balance the books and all that sort of thing. And the other thing to consider is there have been more players come into the club than have gone, you know, yes. since the summer. You know, yes. there's been, been a list of players. So so that it is a bigger squad now than it was. Um but as ever, with transfer windows, they create this sort of need, don't they? This need that it's got to be done before the end of January. So it needs to be done. You know, it's, there's a desperation figure. Again, you, there's a different conversation to be had about are they good things, bad things, transfer windows? You know, was it better in the National League where you could bring players in sort of as and when you needed them? Um, but it is what it is. So it's, it's fascinating. And it is. It just feels like the closing of the January window does feel like, right, Everybody's going to have all their horses in the stables ready yeah. for that finish, ready for that gallop to the finish line. And if there's business to be done, then then great. If not, so be it. Knots will be contenders and players and a real runner and rider for this League 2 running. Uh, it's a good point from Chris Gosling. I wasn't actually at the forum, but I'm, I'm sure Chris would be right paraphrasing. Uh, he said that in the fans forum, uh, the owner said their transfer activity will be based on the opportunity for success. We're in a great position to have a go. So let's see if that is reflected in the next few days. Uh, ENG Ali and Al Hamadi to Ipswich for just over a million reportedly scored less than Macca this year. Great move for the player. Sure, Wimbledon fans will be a bit unhappy. Uh, should help not from a playoff push perspective. I think it will be hard for Wimbledon not to feel that loss. Um, Darren Hayes makes the point, whatever money we got for Luke Williams wouldn't have been budgeted for. Should slash could we use this. Interesting. Um, let's see. Look, the next few days will all be glued to the delights of social media and whatever else for incomings outgoing. Well, there won't be any outgoings. And by the way, <coughs> just, you know, just to reaffirm, ain't going nowhere. All right. He ain't going nowhere. So he will be leading the line. Uh, that's not come from the small farmer's life, by the way, either. Don't think that. But just trust me, he ain't going anywhere. Um, Stel. Thank you so much um, for passing the late fitness test. Yeah. We'll let you dose yourself up. Um, yeah. 
Pass the uh, fitness test. I don't think I'd pass a drug test at them. I mean, if I'd have a Glem <laughs> sip and stuff, it, oh, good grief, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, the, the delights of Mansfield. So you'll be there on Saturday, yeah? All being well, yeah. All yeah. being well. Is it like a double header then for uh, for BBC Radio Nottingham? Because obviously you'd normally be doing uh, the lobby with the Mansfield group there. So is there going to be four of you on commentary or are you going to split yeah. it to a not side and a Mansfield side? Or? I, I, I don't know for definite. Like I said, I don't get involved. I'm not part of the BBC uh, details or anything like that. But I assume we'll be on two different frequencies doing it as two separate sort of uh, commenting groups. So you're right that there'll be two, um, two lots of two commenting us. So I say that hopefully there'll be a few get-ins yes and and hopefully i know it's been really difficult for tickets but hopefully um everyone that's got them is happy and getting uh ready to get there um bit of housekeeping wrexham tickets go on sale on wednesday so uh no details yet on newport but uh, i suspect we'll all be able to get in at newport but wrexham i imagine will be a sellout they, they go on sale on wednesday this week um I think that's about it for now. I'm going to go to bed and in about 10 minutes time, I'm completely knackered. So um, thank you again to everyone. Stel, thank you for coming through the pain barrier, mate. Um, <laughs> and uh, we look forward to seeing you all at Mansfield and on Monday next week. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Cheers.